Andre kind of put me over here in this spot so we could uh, uh, see me okay cause, or anywhere else. But anyway, I, uh, I'm thankful that I can be able to be here tonight to be with you and like to say good evening to all of you. Uh, it's been quite some time since we've last message in Jude, uh, his letter, which is about standing for truth against false teaching given in love to the glory of God. Then I just want to say good to see all of you. I'd like to go ahead and pray now and ask the Lord's blessing upon uh, the message tonight. Father, as we come to the time now of worshiping you and uh, in the spirit of your word, we ask, Father, that you would uh, give us guidance and unction and uh, may your word go forth in power and truth and authority. Uh, may Jesus Christ be exalted and lifted up and may he draw all men to himself. And we ask these things in Jesus' precious and glorious name. Amen. The handout that you have that I passed, uh, I put in your pew uh, earlier before you got here is a review of the last four sermons. Uh, can you imagine having four sermons already in the book of Jude? And uh, we're still not done, and I probably have a few more, uh, if, if the Lord permits me to do that. Um, four sermons before we get into the seven future judgments of, of seven future aspects of judgments of the apostates and false teachers, in which we will only be able to cover only six of them tonight in the aspects in part one. I call this part one tonight, so... Let's review a little bit uh, and uh, from uh, just uh, follow, to follow up with your handout. Uh, the greeting in verses 1 and 2 in your outline there is the introduction. I asked the question, how do we recognize apostates or false teachers? We concluded it was by their actions in indicating that they are actually enemies of the truth. Uh, rejecting Christ by the lifestyle of misleading others by uh, deception and manipulation. And there's a lot of that that goes on in churches. There are three reasons why we should not fear apostates or false teachers. Uh, the first reason uh, not to fear is because we are sanctified by God. The second reason is uh, not to fear is because we are uh, preserved or kept by God. And the third reason uh, not to fear is because we are called by God. Now, part one in your outline, it's uh, designated by the danger of the apostates or false teachers. This covered verses three and four. We covered the fact that they twist the true gospel becoming the greatest threat to the church. That means not the church, uh, or all these churches, but it's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in which they have become a spiritual poison unlike any other. Second part, in the, second, uh, in the part number two, uh, which is described here, the destruction of the apostates or false teachers, verses five through seven, we were taught to plan, uh, plan just as a general would brief his troops about the enemy. Jude begins professing, uh, or profiling rather, Jude begins profiling the apostates for all of his um, readers by dealing with the four perceptions. Remember I, have, I preached about the four perceptions. The first perception is knowing the presence of the apostates, where they are at among us, who they are. Our pastor really does a good job of that, doesn't he? He tells us who these bad guys are. The second uh, perception is determining the prediction or cons uh, concerning the apostates. And then the third prediction is dealing with the portrayal of the apostates and the fourth per, uh, perception is that God has plans for the perishing of the prostates. 
And we'll be getting in a little bit of that tonight too. Afterwards, by knowing all this information, we might, might uh, be well equipped to expose and to disarm any such uh, spiritual terrorists that may come among us. And then the, uh, in part number three, uh, on the outline there, the de deception of apostates or false teachers, we went over verses 8 through 13. We uh, studied how, the, how that scripture has identified these apostates as false dreamers in verses 8 through 10 of Jude. Shows three characteristics of their nature. Remember, I had a, I had a little thing about the three eyes, the I words. Uh, the first one, their immorality uh, with their strong sexual desires and uh, depravity of lust. And number two, their insubordination, uh, despised dominion. In other words, they despise people who are in leadership. And number three, their in, uh, irreverence, uh, dis, um, disrespect towards God and towards those who represent God in his truth. Then in verse 11 through 13, we talked about the three correlations to past apostates in reference to Cain because his sacrifice was not acceptable by God because God knew his murderous heart. And Balaam, because his heart was infested with greed, the love of money. And then Korah, because of the rebellious heart uh, towards God and those who represent God on earth. And then verses three, uh, 11 through 13, uh, continues with the five natural phenomena. The first phenomena, which is apostates without fear, uh, lying upon lies upon lies. That's all they ever do. Secondly, apostates without water, boasters who agree with any doctrine or teaching that passes by. Number three, apostates without fruit, in other words, they were dead because they had no fruit, uh, no living fruit. And number four, apostates with, with uh, waves raging, self-serving, uh, shameful activities in their lives. And number five, apostates who are wandering stars, never faithful or established in God's truth. These things, uh, this brings us to... Um, the section tonight, section number three, the, dis, the dis, uh, description of apostates or false teachers, verses 8 through 16, which we only cover just a few verses inside of that um, in section D. If you go follow down to section D, part one, uh, tonight the message, the coming judgment on apostates will deal with verses 14 through 16 of Jude. That will be our text for tonight, which reads, I'm um, going to read the first verse and then I'm going to talk a little bit about Adam and Enoch. And then I will go into 15 and 16. <clears throat> Reading these three verses. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Now, Adam being the first man created by God from the dust of the ground in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, who is the federal head that's, brings, that's bringing uh, all of mankind into a fallen state of sin, in sin. Enoch, the seventh generation from Adam, known as a man who walked with God, according to Genesis chapter 5, verse 22. And he was translated by God, as the author of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, explains. Now, the last two verses, 15 and 16. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, 
and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking about their own, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in administration because of advent advantage. Hell is a real place and definitely not a popular concept, nor must much of a concern among anyone in our society in this world today, especially in our age of tolerance and practical acceptance. This great doctrine of eternal punishment is considered too taboo to many. Even the very mentioning of it is considered very un unloving even in churches today. After all, in this postmodern culture, many believe that most everyone is basically good and think that life after death, if after life they would say even exists, includes heaven for all except for the evilest people um, of their standard or standard of thinking. However, the scriptures which is God's holy word says in Romans chapter three, verse 12, they are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Also, Jesus states in Mark chapter 10, verse 18, uh, which reads, and Jesus said unto him, to, to him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. It's truly saddening that the political uh, correctness and doctrinal uh, obscurity that characterizes the world around, around us has also definitely permitted, uh, permeated into many uh, churches and even in uh, professing believers. Even among those who call themselves evangelicals, that hell is regarded as only a theological embarrassment to many. And many uh, passages that teach eternal destruction are often explained away, uh, indiscriminately softened or um, ignored altogether by man's perception of thinking. This results in society and even in many of our churches uh, with their flawed views about God's judgment are only reinforced. But to their surprise, there is a contrast in the contemporary uncertainty. God's word is without embarrassment or shame being steadfastly toward about the reality of divine judgment as God characterizes in the following scriptures uh, verses uh, first found in uh, Malachi chapter 3 verse 5 which says and I meaning God will come near to to you to judgment and I again meaning God will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false uh, swearers and against those who oppose the hireling in his wages, the widows and the fatherless, and that turn aside the, the stranger from his right. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts, which is again God. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, but I, God, say, say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Romans chapter 10, verse, verses 10 and 10 through 12. But they, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at not thy brother? 
for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So every one of us shall give an account of him himself to God. No matter what you believe or think or how things will evolve or turn out, this will come to pass because it's guaranteed by Almighty God himself by his word. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. The Apostle Paul continues in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, Be not deceived, God's not mocked, for, whosoever, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Let's look at the various aspects of God's judgment to come. There are seven aspects, but we will only have time to cover six of them. Please keep in mind that there are not six different judgments, but only one judgment that has seven different aspects that I want to share with you uh, to, uh, to, about judgment to come. The first aspect of God's judgment on apostates and all believers, by the way, will take place during the final phase of God's divine wrath that relates to a specific future event which we call the second event or the second coming of Christ. At the end of the age, the Lord Jesus Christ will return, will return uh, to the earth to execute judgment. God the Father has fixed a day in which he will personally judge the world in righteousness through a man whom he has appointed, having furnished proof of all men to all men by raising him from the dead, as we find in Acts chapter 17, verse 31, which says, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. Also, according to Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 30, says, Immediately after the tribulation of these things shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And then we can, then we can go on and say, Apostle Paul added to this statement in Romans chapter 2, verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. And Paul and Peter adds in 2 Peter 2, 2 verse 9, and he and to receive the unjust uh, unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. And then we can go right back to our brother Jude here in his letter in verse 6, he hath received in uh, everlasting change chains he has reserved an everlasting change into darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And then John the Revelator says in Revelation chapter 6, verses 16 through 17, and said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that setteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come and whom shall be able to stand. No human knows the exact hour, nor uh, the, even the day of our Lord's second coming. That is knowledge, that, is knowledge uh, that only God the Father knows, according to Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, which says, But of the day and the hour no, knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And Jesus explains 
uh, to his disciples, as Jesus explains to his disciples, in God's eternal providence, he has fixed the specific moment when his son will return. A glorious event in which he promises will occur quickly, according to Revelation chapter 22, verses 7, 12, and 20. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that uh, keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, uh, to give every man according to his work shall, work shall be. He which testifieth these things saith, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The second aspect of the judgment on apostates and all believers, this judgment will be general and public. Looking at the judgment of the sheep and the goats, which, uh, posit, uh, which possibly occurs immediately uh, preceding the millennial kingdom, Christ will call to account all nations of the earth according to Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 33, which reads, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he set up on the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Not anyone anywhere will be able to hide their sins or escape the responsibility of their actions according to Matthew chapter 10, verse 26, which says, Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing, uh, there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. And also in Mark chapter 4, verse 22, for there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. That, that means made known or revealed. Neither was anything kept secret, but that is that it shall come abroad. And the great, great white throne judgment at the end of earth's history will be more extensive because of all of God's enemies from every age are brought before him for final uh, verdict according to Revelation chapter 20 verses uh, 7 through 15 which says and when the thousand years are ended Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up out, went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed, uh, the, and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false, prophets are, false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the, he and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and the other books were, was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead uh, which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. The dead the de and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. By the way, the only way to have your name written in the book of life is by faith and repentance in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Just as 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, 
that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The third aspect of God's judgment on apostates and all believers, God's judgment will be uh, impartial and just according to Romans chapter 2, verse 11. For there is no respecter of persons with God. In Galatians 2, 6, but of those who seem to, to be somewhat uh, whatsoever, whatsoever uh, were in whatsoever they were, it, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat is uh, in, in conference added nothing to me. And then Genesis chapter 18, verse 25, uh, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Paul further concludes that neither the opening, neither the openly wicked nor the self-righteous will escape the judgment of God as we find in Romans chapter 1 verses 21 through, 20, through 31 and also in Romans chapter 2 verse, verses 1 through 3 which I'll read. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever, O man, whosoever uh, thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou, for thou that judgest does the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to the truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things and does the same, that thou shall escape the judgment of God? This is judgment which God the Father has declared and instructed, um, instructed, entrusted to his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to fulfill, which is found in John 5, 22, which says, For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment to his Son. And again in Matthew chapter 16, verse 27, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father, with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Only God in his triune glory is fit to judge because only he is perfectly holy and righteous according to Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fear, fearful in praises, uh, doing wonders. Also in Samuel 2.2, 2, 2, for Samuel 2.2, 2, there is none holy as the Lord, uh, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. In Psalm 47, verse 8, God reigneth over the heathen, God setteth upon the throne of his holiness. Israel, Isaiah 6.3, and, and one crieth unto Another and saith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, and the four beasts uh, had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. God in his holiness is the only one fit to judge being the only one of no respecter of persons who knows and has been or has seen all of man's works from the beginning of creation until the end of the world to come as we know it. <clears throat> the fourth aspect of God's judgment on apostates and all unbelievers the promise of divine judgment is intended as a warning. The Lord designed it, in, designed it to produce fear of his wrath to come in the lives of his creatures. 
because of their sin nature, according to uh, these next eight verses, please uh, listen very carefully. Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse one, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, uh, pre pre perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Hebrews 10, 11. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. And then John 19, 8, when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. Hebrews 11, 7, by faith Noah being warned of God, things not, things not seen as yet, moved with fear, perplex, uh, prepared an ark to the saving of the house by the uh, by the by the which he uh, condemned the world and because and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith acts chapter 24, 24 verse 25 and as the uh, as he reasoned of righteousness temp, uh, temperance and judgment to come felix trembled and answered Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call thee. And Jesus also gave a warning in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And fear not them which uh, kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. By uh, warning mankind of God's wrath, he graciously offers uh, to all the unsaved, unregenerate, uh, lost people uh, an opportunity to repent in, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, which says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some uh, men count slackness, but is long-suffering uh, to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And the fifth aspect of God's judgment on apostates and unbelievers, God's judgment is based on his law in which he, in which is explained in the following scripture references. Romans chapter two, verse 12, for as many have sinned without law shall not, shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Romans 3.19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them, um, who, them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. And then James 2.10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Guilt becomes the heart, be, be, be guilty because the hearts of men are uh, devious and dreadfully wicked and cannot be trusted to do that which is right before God, according to, Jane, according to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse nine. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Mankind is not only wicked, but they are unable to keep God's law, as it says in Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse 20. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And then Romans eight, seven, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Not only are the fleshly minds uh, hostile towards God, God, but God, towards God, but they are also willfully disobedient by refusing to follow God's law, as we see in Psalm chapter 78, verse 10. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. Jeremiah 9, 13. And the Lord saith, 
because they have forsaken my law, which I set before thee, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walketh therein. Everyone has violated the law of God according to scripture, as it says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And also again in James 2.10, for whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. The sixth aspect of, aspect of God's judgment on apostates and unbelievers, God's final judgment will occur in a fixed phase starting during the seventh year tribulation period seven year tribulation period. God will unleash his wrath against the ungodly through the uh, seal judgments in Revelation chapter six through chapter eight, verse five, then through trumpet judgments in Revelation chapter eight, verse six, through chapter 11, verse 19, and also through the bowl judgments in Revelation chapter 15, verse five, through chapter 16, verse 21. God's judgments will conclude uh, this, this seven year tribulation with the battle of Armageddon in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 through chapter 21, in which he will utterly defeat his enemies. After Armageddon, the Lord will set up his earthly kingdom during which Satan will be bound and cast into a Cat, uh, bound in, in Christ will reign in Jerusalem for a thousand years according to Revelation chapter 20 verses 1 through 6. Satan will then be released to lead a one final rebellion before he has before and before he and his followers are cast into the lake of fire uh, forever according to Revelation chapter 20 verses 7 through 15. These earthly judgments, earthly judgments um, in the first phase of God's judgment, which is an earthly period in their judgmental time. Then the second phase will be a heavenly one belonging, <clears throat> beginning with the final um, condemning of all of God's enemies. This will be at the great white throne judgment. And those <clears throat> different aspects is about that great white throne judgment. In concluding, <clears throat> consequently, everyone deserves God's wrath as we find in 2 Thessalonians verses one, chapter one, verses six through eight. <clears throat> Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. That you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire <clears throat> taking vengeance on them that knew not God. And they obeyed not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The wonderful news is that God extends forgiveness to those who undeniably believe in the Son, in His Son, Jesus Christ, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. Believers will not face God's final wrath because they have been saved through faith and repentance in the atoning work of Jesus Christ. As scripture tells us in Luke chapter 18, verses 13 and 14. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast saying, God be merciful to me a sinner. 
I, have, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Romans 3.28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And then Romans 5, 9, much more then, being just now justified by his blood, we shall be saved through wrath, from wrath, through him. And their names, and their names are written in the book of life, according to Revelation chapter 21, verses 24 through 27. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory of the honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. However, all those who persist in violating God's law, showing signs of no true repentance, will be judged for their rebellious unbelief. We'll pick up the seventh and final aspect of judgment on apostates and all unbelievers at another time. God, this section will be dealing with God's retribution ultimately results in eternal damnation in hell will be covered in our next portion of this part two of the message. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you that all these verses were written in your word. They were our, for our edification or for our understanding. They're, they're to help us, Father, in our lives. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would uh, uh, allow these verses to permeate into our hearts and uh, the different aspects about the one judgment that's coming. And uh, help us to be able to uh, share these things with other people as the scriptures have been given. And bless us tonight now, we ask in Christ's name. Amen.